CF Cable TV, television at its best. With us now is Lise LeBeau and Duart McLean of Open Heart, and they're trying to help people live fuller relationships. Lise, how do you go about doing that? So what we do is we create a seminar. It's a weekend seminar mm -hmm. that is taking place in a beautiful environment. It's a manoir by the, the Lake St. Louis. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that weekend, people have opportunity to look at what they want to create in their life, what they want to create in their relationships, and they also get to look at that they have the possibility to create exactly what they want, even what they stop dreaming about. Now, what would be causing these people to, to block themselves from achieving fuller relationships? I'm sure everyone wants, well, not everyone, <laughs> but the ideal is to have a, a full and loving relationship and a meaningful life. And is it, there must be difficulties for some? Well, it's experience of life, you see. Often we watch the parents kind of just getting by in their relationship, mm -hmm. not really having fun and communicating and getting busy and struggling. And uh, we, it sets an example for us. And sometimes we decide that since it's going to be like that, we will be happy with just mediocre relationship. We don't look anymore for a live relationship, fun, joy in relationships. And it's a pattern also that is created at school in the environment. And I would say generally in the world, I sense that people have set up for resignation instead of really going for what they want and seeing that they have the power to create what they want. So what we do is empower people to create what they truly desire in their heart. In do their it. life. Sorry. Do it. Are you telling individuals about how to, how to go about doing this, or are you setting up a general framework for people to work through <coughs> it themselves? It's really the second thing. It's, it, we set up an environment or a framework in which people discover for themselves, first of all, what they truly want. You know, you might call it their personal vision for themselves, particularly in the area of relationship. Uh, and then secondly, in, in, the, in the context of doing that or in the process of doing that, they begin to see the decisions that they've made that are limiting them or actually blocking them from realizing their goals. You know, these self-limiting beliefs, for example. For example, a belief like, uh, I don't deserve to be loved. That's a, that's a belief that a lot of people have. They may not even be fully aware of it, but, uh, you know, based on certain experiences that they've had when they were younger or, um, or growing up, made certain decisions. Excuse me, are you talking about extreme cases here where a, a child will be abused when he's growing up or something and think that nobody... No, does? not particularly. I, it, all of us, I think, are subject to making these kinds of decisions. The, the open heart is really for people who are at whatever level they're at, and they can be really having very high quality of life, and want to take their life and their relationships to the next level to a new level of fulfillment of, uh, as Lee said, aliveness and satisfaction. Open heart really is a way for people to have a breakthrough in, in, in their relationships to a whole new level of fulfillment. So what has to happen inside a person's head? Or obviously, I guess this is the goal of this weekend is mm -hmm. for some sort of change to, ta uh, to take place within the person to allow them to, to realize these things. Can you explain what, what, your, what that is? Well, the first thing that needs to happen is uh, see the possibility, like um, create the vision that it is possible to have a very exciting, passionate relationship or in relationship in general, supportive relationship instead of uh, feeling all alone. The possibility is the first step because what you can think of, you can achieve. That's the first thing. Then it's releasing whatever blockages or whatever fears there are. Because there's also, it may look uh, funny to say this, but we have some fears which are much more important related to success. We are much more used to failing in relationship, failing in what we want to achieve, because we have seen that over and over again maybe with our parents, our friends, our teachers, some 
in some area, the example that we had have failed. So how can I make it better? How can I be happy and really be excited about life when everything seems to be so awful about this life? So, and often people do make the decision that that's the way it is and they can't see any other way. So that's the first thing is to see a new possibility and then release the fears or the blockages. And often there's a lot of emotions connected with a decision. Let's say a traumatic event in our life where we don't really release those emotions in a natural way, which would be to cry or to be angry or whatever it is the emotion we carry in ourselves. We learn to suppress it, you know? We have to be Mrs. Wright, Mr. Wright, looking good. So it's so important to look good that it's not even accepted in public to be angry. <coughs> and this is a natural function of a human being, is expressing some feelings. Sometimes it's anger, sometimes it's fear, sometimes it's sadness, and it's absolutely normal. It sounds like what you're saying, or my impression is, you're talking a lot about positive reinforcement and telling yourself that you're okay and you can do things. Is, is, is this seminar, would that be akin to surrounding yourself with positive people? It's not positive reinforcement. It it's may not. look like it, the way I express myself, but it's more like seeing the possibility of all that we are and who we are truly. Mm -hmm. And from there, kind of uh, unravel everything that is not like who we are, everything that is unlike being alive because we are walking here, being half alive, or maybe uh, more dead than alive, I mean inside. So it's just recuperating that inner life. It's not just a mental process of a positive thinking, because this just works for a little bit. It doesn't last. If we don't unravel the fears and the blockages, positive thinking is just gonna work on short term. It does not last. Can you describe, well, you mentioned this term unravel, unraveling blockages and releasing energy. Is, is there a way to describe that in a, in a few well, minutes? Well, in the, in the, it's hard to do that in a few minutes, but in the workshop itself, um, the participants uh, have an opportunity to identify, consciously identify what some of those are, some of those patterns, negative patterns, blockages are, and to um, make the correct appropriate affirmation and we do some techniques of visualization and relaxation and so on that will support the participants in in releasing um, whatever is there that needs to be released now the really that the seminar is doing is giving the participants tools tools that they can work with in the seminar and learn how to use and carry with them out of the seminar into their life so that they can use these tools and apply these tools in, in cultivating and creating the kind of relationships they want to have. And we have you know, a wide range of various kinds of activities and tools that we use that, you know, in the two and a half days. The seminar goes on for two and a half days. Um, is that it or do they go back? Uh, do, you, do they go to, is there follow-ups or is there books that people Yes, we have, a, we have a completion seminar uh, mm -hmm. in the following week and then we have ongoing support for those who choose to to participate, but the seminar itself is complete in and of itself. Okay. When you were talking these before about um, realizing your, your full potential and that people may be plagued with anomie or alienation or whatever you want to call it, is there any uh, political um, analysis in this, in, in this uh, seminar of yours? Do you find it more, um, uh, more applicable to people who come from North America or in Northern nations as opposed to uh, people from Spain or Mexico? Well, those seminars are happening through all the world. All the world. There's organizations in the United States from who I have studied and uh, been uh, working with for a while that are in 18 countries. Even in Israel right now, they're doing uh, seminars on loving relationships. And uh, there's also another organization that does uh, the same kind of work which is now in 42 countries. So this is really for uh, anyone that when they wake up in the morning, they don't think, well, 
that's a great day. What am I going to create today out of this day? So this is not another thing we can pin on capitalism or uh, industrial production or anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> no. no okay. It's really for our happiness and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And when each individual is uh, self-realized or in the process of realizing himself and happy, it creates a better world for everyone. Now you were talking about relationships. Now I, I was under the impression that you were just talking about uh, intimate relationships, but I guess that can carry over into the workplace or... <coughs> we're also talking about relationship a, at work, relationship with money, relationship with our body health, because everything in life is based, whether we think about it or not, on relationships. Even if I look at a rock, you know, the, what I think of the rock and how I feel when I see that rock creates a relationship that I have with that rock, you see? And people create relationship with money. Let's say that I have um, all kinds of thoughts about money that is dirty and it's bad, people that have it, you know, they, they steal others or whatever it is. It's for sure that I won't attract a lot of money in my hands if I have all those kinds of bad judgments, negative judgments about that. Or if I do attract a lot, I'm going to release it real quick, like spend it and stuff like this, you see? So we get to look at relationships on all levels in every area of our life. Okay, we're going to keep on talking, but our director wants us to pop up your phone number on the screen just so uh, our viewers will be able to take it down if they want to get more information on that. But I want to go on about the, the relationship thing, and one of the elements of having a positive relationship with other people is how do you look at yourself? Sure, it's loving ourselves. That's the beginning and uh, that's the following and that's the ongoing event for all our life. It's loving ourselves, learning to lo love ourselves more and from there express ourselves from that place where we have uh, self-esteem, self-acceptance and from there create beautiful relationships because if we think very low and feel very low about ourselves, we will attract people in our lives that agree with that. You know, if I think I'm no good, I'm going to attract people that think I'm no good. And probably that they think that they are no good themselves. You see, and if I think inside and feel, you know, and I am in touch with all my qualities, my inner qualities. That's what I'm going to manifest in the world. And if I'm in touch with those qualities, I'm going to attract people who are in touch with their full potential and who are manifesting that too. So there, the relationship, instead of being a dependency, like I'm not enough or I'm incomplete, a relationship would complete me, I feel totally whole and complete and realize myself as a human being in my career or whatever I choose to do in my life. And there, it's a surplus of relationship. It's nourishing, but it's not a dependency, needy relationship. I'm sorry, we've run out of time. Thank you very much for dropping by. And we'll see you in two weeks. So long.